The Pearl City Hyderabad boasts many intriguing wonders, but all these attractions stand outclassed when we compare them to the timeless treasure house of breathtaking objects and priceless possessions, the Salar Jung Museum. Today, it is the third largest museum in India and can be called a national treasure. But the credit of acquiring this vast collection goes to the noble family of Salarjans, erstwhile prime ministers to the Nizam. It is believed that three generations of the Salarjans journeyed through Europe and other continents for object the art and returned home with shiploads of precious artifacts. However, the chief architect of this great collection of art is Salarjung III, Mir Yusuf Ali Khan. At Salarjung Museum, the magnificence of the European sculpture will transport you into a surreal world where the impassioned vision of genius has found form and shape as the world's greatest masterpieces. It is an experience that will etch unforgettable memories in your mind. Salarjan the nobleman was an avid art lover. His eye for beauty was almost divine. He instinctively picked the most outstanding iconic pieces of art in pursuit of his monumental passion. Be they originals or brilliant copies, his thirst for beauty led him to acquire the objects of his desire. His incredibly fabulous repository is today acclaimed as the largest one-man art collection in the world. Salarjung worshipped beauty in its most elegant and enduring forms, that of marble and bronze sculpture. His salutation to the extraordinary genius of Western sculptures stands showcased in this gallery. It was his magnificent obsession to acquire the world's most treasured pieces of art, be it sculptures, in marble, bronze or stone, whether as stunning originals or amazingly genuine copies. His quest was insatiable. He encompassed the history of European sculpture in his huge collection containing more than 100 celebrated art pieces, brilliant statues, figurines, busts, group sculpture. And stunning life-size solo originals. Among Salarjung Museum's innumerable galleries, most interesting and enthralling is the one which houses the marble and bronze statuary. Marble has always attracted mankind as the most beautiful medium to express creative energy and flights of artistic fantasy. Sculptors across the ages have created magic out of marble, marvelous sculptures, magnificent monuments that still stand as everlasting epitomes of beauty. Chisel on marble and bronze have wrought incomparable wonders, examples of which enthrall the world even to this day. European sculpture has an impressive and glorious history. This realization dawns as we look around in wonder at the myriad exhibits that represent the eras of splendor.
the collection is virtually a mirror of the past of European art and creativity, ranging from 4th century BC to early 20th century. Classical Greek, which celebrated the magnificence of the human form. Lively Roman with its vibrant inventiveness. The fabulous Renaissance when art was reborn and took the world by storm. Dramatic Baroque with its energy and agility. Superbly beautiful Rococo with its gaiety, lightness and decorative effects. The deliberate return to the classical in the neoclassic era and finally the uniquely interesting experimentation of the 20th century. A sense of moving though time envelops you and your mind exults in sheer admiration as you span the ages with your wandering gaze. Michelangelo, Bernini, Donatello and many more master sculptors who carved their names in letters of gold in the chapters of time vie for attention in your mind as the gallery unfolds before your eyes. Mythological maidens, biblical damsels, nubile nymphs and gorgeous goddesses, legendary queens and not to miss a pious priestess feminine grace and chiseled beauty has been depicted in such an alluring manner that one can only marvel at talent, genius and painstaking toil of the creators. To see that a piece from Rome was brought in here, especially a piece like the Vale Rebecca. Similarly, you know, we have certain other pieces the museum which were collected by Saladin the first and uh, these include Maria Antoinette's dressing table and uh, her writing table. Now Maria Antoinette's dressing table was made by the Dresden company in Germany and Maria Antoinette was a queen of France. So for a piece which was made by the Germans for the queen of France was something which was very very different from the ordinary. Salar Jung was a very intelligent man. He looked at all this from different angles and thought to himself that when these pieces mean so much to all these people, these foreign dignitaries who come here, then they must be having something very special about them. Then he sat back and realized, well, we are going into history when we are talking of a piece which has come from Maria Antoinette. It goes to prove that it was a personal effect of a Queen of France. So that is how this was one of the reasons why he went on collecting one after the other and he he made it a point to collect all those people pieces which had not only the intrinsic value which I am talking about but also historic value. the statues the pride of place must go to the veiled Rebecca by the gifted Italian sculptor G.B. Benzoni. This original was acquired in 1871 by Salarjung I, built on a visit to Italy. This piece is music in marble, a sui genres, a class apart. It is a life-sized statue on a pedestal hewn from a single piece of white marble. Such feminine beauty, 
so full of bashfulness with a veil to cover her modesty chiseled from such a hard substance as marble is unparalleled Goddess of love and beauty has charmed art connoisseurs and artists since time immemorial and one of the earliest masterpieces of classical art the Venus di Milo is represented here in a striking replica No classical western art collection can be complete without the voluptuous Venus in one of her many moods and entrancing poses another marble replica at Salajan Museum that tantalizes us with its uniqueness is that of Venus surprised in her bath a life size standing Venus is an ode to this goddess the amorous pursuits of Apollo the sun god and the lovely vestal nymph Daphne fleeing from his attentions has been exquisitely captured in marble by Lorenzo Bernini of the 17th century exemplifying the baroque style at its best a marble copy adorns salajan's collection daphne transforming herself into laurel tree just as apollo catches up with her is a magical mythological moment skillfully frozen in marble women who have shaped history with their incredible beauty regal presence and majestic power cleopatra and mary antoinette Reposing in intricately carved marble splendor intercept our gaze as eternal symbols of the many splendid faces of femininity. The heroic men are no less arresting and artistically immortalized. Beautifully proportioned bodies, rippling muscles, statuesque figures and distinguished features add a lifelike aura to these mythological and historical figures. The divine Roman emperor Augustus, Greek god Apollo, Mercury, the messenger of the gods, are fine examples of the perfect male as idolized in Western sculpture. Mercury, the Greek messenger of the gods, is often envisioned as peering through the skies. Salarjan's unerring eye for the unusual has acquired a beautiful bronze copy of. Mercury this is a superbly done copy of original by the legendary artist Lysippus of 3rd century BC who belonged to the court of Alexander the Great Michelangelo's mesmerizing mastery in marble is legendary his monumental contribution to Europe and in truth the entire world of art is yet unrivaled like there are so many pieces in the Salazar museum today which were collected by Salajan. Of course, Mukhtar Mulk Salajan I collected a lot of pieces which stand out today as the best in the museum. But then Salajan spent nearly all his life to collect something which was not only special but extraordinary. And what is again very important is that a person, if you go to Europe or if you go to any other country, to go to a museum if you go to a museum you will find that there are different departments there is a department which talks about statues there is a department which talks about glass they talk about bronzes so there are different heads of different organizations who specialize in a particular field 
but Sal Arjang had this quality to pick and choose from any medium. He would pick the best from ivory, he would pick the best from jade, he would pick the best from bronzes, he would pick the best. And today when people talk about it, they, they don't seem to realize that the man, the pieces are fine, but actually the credit goes to the man whose eye has been instrumental in collecting something which is not only extraordinary, which is unparalleled. Salajang represents the great master sculptor's work with an imposing copy of Moses as a miniature bronze and a bronze replica of Lorenzo di Medici. Both are compelling examples of the great sculptor's impassioned and highly personal style which is noted for its awe-inspiring grandeur. A haunting bronze, the subject of which inspired many sculptors, is the group sculpture of Lagoon and his two sons. According to legend, Lagoon, a priest of Apollo, objected to the huge wooden horse being drawn into the city of Troy and was punished by the gods to be crushed to death by serpents. The expression of anguish and spasm of suffering in the face of Lagoon is incomparable. This astounding bronze copy is worthy of admiration in any prestigious art collection of the world. A stroll down this gallery is like walking down the corridor of time. Despite the rich history of the pieces, this is not a rigorously historical collection. Not a single piece is here to make an art historical point. Yet, the enthusiastic art lover can however trace the progress and pride of European sculpture way back from the ancient Greek to the modern 19th and 20th centuries. Salajan Museum endeavors to familiarize us with an intimate view of rare pieces of art that epitomize the splendid bygone eras. Interesting and delightful sculptures of 19th century at Salarjan Museum are from Italy, France, England and Germany, created mostly in the classical style. A finely done piece, The Girl Bathing, belonging to 1828, is notable for its undeniable attraction. But a most charming piece dated to the 50s of the 19th century in the museum's collection is Daphne. The sea nymph pursued by Apollo was created by Marshall Wood, an English sculptor, and exhibited in 1859 in the Royal Academy. Though you need to travel back into history to fully understand the intricacies of each sculpture, what you see before your eyes is a rare and riveting sight. European history of sculpture right down to the present from the time of the ancients is laid out before you in a random manner, which is both thrilling to explore and awesome to comprehend. Salarjan's ambition was to have things that were fantastic works of art and while viewing the exhibits, our aesthetic thrill is undoubtedly paramount. Visitors throng the museum on all days except Friday. Salajang Museum is a much sought after stopover, a must on the itinerary of every tourist who visits Hyderabad. The entire museum with its 38 galleries would take some time to browse through. But the European Marble Gallery is a big draw since it houses the two pieces which have become synonymous with the museum. The Veiled Rebecca 
which we have just seen and another carved wooden wonder, Mephistopheles and Margarita. You surely wouldn't have seen anything like this anywhere before. One pedestal holds two ingeniously carved figures. The stroke of genius has managed to metamorphose an ordinary piece of sycamore wood into two pulsating characters from Goethe's famous drama, Faust. The striking contrast between the two figures in this double statue, one personifying good and the other evil, is worthy of every viewer's appreciation and awe. What is remarkable is that the unknown sculptor has skillfully managed the protrusion of a bold and brash figure to showcase the shy humbleness of another figure. The sculptor may be announcing to the world that good and evil are two sides of the same coin and it only depends on which side is more pronounced in which person. The Lajing Museum has been ranked among the country's best museums and with good reason. The immeasurable patience, the immense effort which has gone into the acquiring of this spectacular collection, to most it would seem an impossible mission. Sargent's life's passion materialized into a magnificent art assemblage that none in the world have been able to equal. Taken up as a diversion by the young Salajang three, were joined into a formidable repository of art of global fame and national pride. The famous Christie's and Sotheby's of London considered Sir Larjan as a valuable client and sent him catalogues of rare art objects being handled by them. On his two trips to England, he brought back great loads of artifacts adding more and more beauties to his fabulous treasure trove. He remains in the firmament of art as a man who made the impossible happen. A man who single-handedly brought the finest representations of the world's artistic masterpieces under one roof for generations to admire and posterity to take pride in. Turning back the clock across the ages of the European sculpture must have been an exhilarating experience, a fascinating eye-opener for one and all. This is just one facet of a museum that has untold treasure to unfold. In our next episode, we bring to you the superb and stunning jade collection of Salarjung. This exciting episode is surely a must-see. For now, let me say, Happy viewing till we meet again next time.